see you guys. What I've been meditating on this morning, meditating is just like a fancy word for, you know how cows chew cud? That's what we do whenever we meditate. We're just thinking the same thought over and over and over, vomiting into our brains and then re-chewing it. That's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> this is kind of like one of those shows where you've got someone on the piano who chimes in for the late night host. All right. I wanted to read you guys from Luke 12, verse 6 to 7. This is the Passion Translation. And it says, what is the value of your soul to God? Could your worth be defined by an amount of money? God doesn't abandon or forget even the small sparrow he has made. How then could he forget or abandon you? What about the seemingly minor issues of your life? Do they matter to God? Of course they do. So you never need to worry, for you are far more valuable to God than anything else in this world. Just wanted to encourage you guys this morning that I feel like we would worry a lot less if we had a revelation of how huge God is, right? And maybe sometimes it's not the revelation of how huge God is. Maybe it's that we feel like he's so big and so vast, why would he pay attention to us? But right here in Luke 12, it tells us that he is zoned in on you. He is mindful of you. And so I just wanted to encourage you. He is here stewarding the details of your life and just leading you and guiding you in love. Right? So what an encouragement. Good morning. Welcome to church. We want to see you here at the Gulf Coast Christian Center. Encounter God, find community, and fulfill your purpose. Right? So we just encountered God. We are about to find community. Now, if you are in this room and you have been a part of the Gulf Coast Christian Center for less than two years, please raise your hand. Less than two years. Everybody else, look around. You see those hands raised? I would like you, if you have not met one of these people, to go and shake their hand. Guys, in less than two years, I'm sorry, this is probably going to be a little bit overwhelming. But what we're going to do right now is be the church for three minutes. We'll get back with you guys. Also, use social distance at your own discretion, whatever makes you feel comfortable. This is America. Have a good morning. We'll see you in three minutes. Uh, we teach today on the Holy Spirit, our counselor. You know, the Holy Spirit's been given for a lot of reasons. He convicts us of sin. He lets us know that we're a child of God. He leads us and guides us. But one of his functions is as a counselor. And so too often, we depend upon our intellect for counsel, or we depend upon other people for counsel, but we should depend upon the Holy Spirit. And of course, the Word is our primary counsel. And as a pastor, if somebody comes to me for counsel, my job is to give them the Word of God, not to give them my opinion but to give them uh -huh. what the Word says. So and many times the Word says something different than our opinion. That's right. And so if somebody comes to you for counsel, you should give them the Word of God. Find some scriptures to give them because that's the best counsel that there is. But the Holy Spirit helped write the Word of God. And so he is a great counselor. I heard a story of a wife who went to a marriage counselor. And she told the counselor, said, uh, I think I married the wrong husband. I need to... A different kind of husband. So he asked her, what kind of husband do you want? What you want your husband to do? And she said, I want a husband who can sing and dance. I want a husband who will spend the day with me. I want a husband who will tell me interesting stories. And the counselor said, you don't need a husband. You need a television. And uh, TVs can do all of that. And man, husband went to a marriage counselor. And he told the counselor, said, I've been married to my wife for many years, but... I want to divorce her. And so the counselor asked, well, why do you want to divorce her? Since she hadn't talked to me in two months. And so the counselor thought for a minute. He said, well, you better think long and hard about that because a woman like that is hard to find. <laughs> what a blessing to have a woman like that. But, uh, I heard another story about a Jewish man who had a son who had no interest in the Jewish faith. And so his father was disappointed and he sent him to Israel to study Judaism. And so when his son came back, he told his father, he said, Father, he said, I became a Christian when, when I was in Israel. And uh, so, man, his father was really upset. Said, How could that happen? You know, you're supposed to be studying Judaism and you become a Christian. And so he goes down to the synagogue. He talks to the cantor. And he tells the cantor, he said, I sent my son to Israel and he came back as a Christian. And so the cantor said, well, funny you should say that, 
because I too sent my son to Israel and he came back as a Christian. And so then they were both upset. And so they decided to go and talk to the rabbi. And so they told the rabbi, they said, both of us sent our sons to Israel and both of them came back as Christians. And the rabbi said, funny you should say that. He said, because I too sent my son to Israel and he came back as a Christian. And so now, now all three of them were upset. And so the rabbi said, I think we should go outside and pray. And so they joined hands and they began to pray. And God speaks from the sky and said, what troubles you? And the rabbi said, all three of us sent our sons to Israel. And all three of them came back as Christians. And God said, funny you should say that. <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit is our guide. And as God, he has unlimited knowledge. He can see the future. He knows everything about the past. He knows every detail about every detail of, every detail of your life. He's even numbered the hairs on your head. Amen. And so he knows every detail of your life, and he knows exactly what to do. And the great thing is that we have access to his wisdom and his knowledge if we'll take the time, if we'll learn how to tap into the Holy Spirit's counsel and his wisdom, because his counsel is always the right counsel. And I found out many times when God speaks to me, it's just exactly the opposite of the way that I've been thinking. Amen. He sends me on a different direction. He has, he has something different to tell me than what I could calculate with my intellect. But Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us into all truth. And John 16, 12 says, I've yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he'll show you things to come that the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. And so he can warn us about something in the future, but sometimes he shows us God's plan and God's blessings for the future. I've had many dreams about things that happen in the future, and sometimes they were blessings that were going to come my way. Amen? Yeah. And so God just kind of showed me ahead of time so that I would be encouraged, so that I would be strengthened. I've also had dreams that were warnings that they got my attention and God spoke to me in that way. And of course, not all dreams are from God, but some of them are. And so the, the Holy Spirit helps us understand. The main, and one of the main things he does is he enlightens us to the word of God. Or he makes the word of God real to us. He reveals the word of God to us. And you can read the word of God and not really understand it or not have a heart knowledge of it. And so the Holy Spirit, you know, if you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the word to you, he's going to do it. The Apostle Paul prayed prayers for the, the Ephesian church in, in Ephesians 1 and in, in Ephesians 3. And so it was that they would know the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they would know the things of God, the hope of their calling, and, and they would understand these things that are uh, taught in the word of God. And so we can pray those prayers for ourselves, and we can pray those prayers for others, but the Holy Spirit will quicken the Word of God to us. And the more you know the Word, the more you hear the Word, the more the Holy Spirit has to work with. And so many times God speaks to us by bringing a scripture to our mind. And so He'll bring a scripture to our mind. And so God's speaking to us that way. Right. And when that happens to me, I look up that scripture and I meditate on it. Yeah. And I say, Whoa, this is what God's saying. It's not an accident that scripture came through your mind, but the Holy Spirit was bringing that to your mind. And so he will show us things to come. And so I called a few weeks ago about many of the ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And the first way he speaks to us is the inner voice. He bears witness with our spirit. There's a knower that you have on the inside. If you're born again, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You have a built-in guidance system. And if you stay full of the Holy Spirit, close to God, that guidance system works well. But if you stray, you don't stay close to God and you're following Him from a distance, sometimes that guidance system doesn't work the way that it should. Amen? But when we're full of the Holy Spirit and we're in connection with Him, we have an inward guidance system of bearing witness. I don't know about you, but many times I was going to say something, but I had a check. Don't say that. Yeah. That was the Holy Spirit talking to you. 
And how I many you know the Holy Spirit doesn't just talk to you about spiritual things, but He talks to you about your life. Yeah. Every detail of, of your life, the way you relate to other people, the way you treat other people, your personal business, everything. The Holy Spirit will talk to you about all those things because He is your helper. He's called alongside the help. And sometimes people say, well, I don't have any help. Listen, you've got the greatest help there is. You have a divine helper called the Holy Spirit. And if nobody else will help you, He will help you. Let me say this, if nobody else can help you, He can help you. Amen? He's Man, He's worked on a lot of losers and made them winners. Amen? He can transform anybody. But in Acts 27, 9, this is about the Apostle Paul, says that now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with her in much damage, not only in the lading and ship, but also of our lives. The Apostle Paul has an inner perception. He knows ahead of time they're going to get on this ship, and they're headed for trouble. And so he tells the captain, captain ahead of time, and the captain ignored him. Amen. So the Holy Spirit can even warn you as to your travels and, and where you go and what you do. Amen. If you will listen to his voice. And so many times we'll let our intellect override the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I've done that before. And when you do, you, you know, you're sad that you did it because you made a mistake. But Paul has this inner voice, inner perception on the inside. When I was in high school, junior in high school, I was riding around with some friends around town, one of them pulled out a joint, started smoking it, offered it to me. I had alarm bells going off in my spirit, like don't do it, you know, get away from that. But I didn't listen. And I got involved with that. You know, it cost me a lot of time, it cost me a lot of money. If I'd invested every dollar I spent on dope, I'd be a multi-millionaire now, <laughs> amen? And uh, it cost me because I did not listen, amen? And so the Holy Spirit will warn you, come on, there'll be an alarm bell going off when you're not supposed to do something, but then there will also be a desire to do the right things, or, or when the Holy Spirit wants you to do something, He'll put a desire on the inside of you. He'll give you a green light that you're headed in the right direction, that you're doing the right thing, that you're doing what God has called you to do. And so, if, you know, if, if you get a thought in your mind to help somebody, or to give, or something like that, that is God speaking to you. God doesn't, you know, the devil doesn't tell you to help people, and help people in need. But when you have those thoughts, and it's God speaking to you, and so Jesus said that if we give, men will give back to us. And so that's one of the ways that God work, works. He uses people to give to you, and he also uses you to give to people. And I found that whenever I obey God and I, and I give or I help somebody, there's always a blessing that's associated with that. Amen. There's a blessing for obedience whenever I, whenever I do that. Amen. And so God never tells you, you know, to do something bad. The, never, the devil never tells you to do something good. Amen. But the Holy Spirit leads us. He leads us by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He can speak to us through tongues or interpretation or prophecy. And prophecy is just somebody hearing from God and giving a word to somebody else. And so uh, the Holy Spirit can speak to us through prophecy. I've been led by, by prophecy before. And so Acts 13, 2, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul, for the work whereunto I've called them. And so the apostles are ministering to God. That's what they're doing. They're praying. They're worshiping. They're just spending time with God. And so in that atmosphere of spending time with God, in His presence, the Holy Spirit spoke and sent Paul and Barnabas on a missions trip. It said it's time for them to go. Now I'm sure they already knew that. Recall, uh, Jesus had already appeared to Paul and told him, you're going to be a, a servant for my sake and yeah. to take the gospel to the world. But Paul had prepared for many years and finally, when the time came, there was a right time when Paul was sent out. And he came through a prophetic word as they were ministering to God. And so that's, the Holy Spirit can speak to us that way. And so, you know, when, when God speaks to you, sometimes it's for other people. It's, or it's for a group of people. Yeah. And so we can be led in that way. 
And so the, the word says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Yeah. And so too many times we just make our own plans without asking God what he wants us to do. But the Bible says if we will acknowledge him in the decisions that we make and we'll pray and we'll ask him that he will give us guidance. And so if you're seeking God's guidance, don't ask everybody else in town what you should do. And especially don't ask people who aren't Christians. Because they're not going to give you godly wisdom or godly advice. But find out, go to the Word of God, but then pray and ask God for His answers and for His directions. And also remember that delay is not denial. Just because God hadn't answered yet does not mean that He is not going to. Amen? Because God's timetable is different than our timetable. I mean, we live in a fast food society. And I mean a fast everything society. You know, if you go to Sonic and it takes them over five minutes to get your burger, you're upset. You know, this is, this is abuse. And uh, people get upset. If you want to buy something, you don't have to go to the mall. You can get on your computer and order it and it'll be delivered to your house the next day. Come on, if you want to research, you don't have to go to a library. You've got it right there on your computer. If you want to, if you want to buy a book, you don't have to go to a bookstore. You can buy it online, right on Kindle, read it right then. Right. And so we want everything quick, but God does not move many times in rush ways or in quick ways. And one of the reasons why is he wants to develop patience and character in our lives. Hebrews 6.12 says that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Patience just means that you're going to have to wait. And I don't know about you, but I hate waiting. You know, I'm just, the way I'm geared, you know, I want, I want everything real fast. And I absolutely hate the ways. To wait, and I will avoid situations if I'm going to have to wait a long time. But God wants to develop patience in us. And the best way I know to have patience is to have children. And uh, they'll develop patience in you. Come on. Before we had children, we just did whatever we wanted. I pretty much did whatever I wanted. But whenever we had children, my wife had the weight. Amen? Or we we both had the weight. And it developed some character. I, I'm totally, I was totally changed. I'm totally different between the time I, before I had children and the time after I had children. True. After a few years, I grew up real fast. Amen? And, uh, and so kids made me do that. Yeah. Another way to develop patience is go to a theme park or amusement park. <laughs> and uh, you would develop a whole lot of patience. For sure. Another way to develop patience is to call the IRS and, <laughs> and try to get somebody to talk to you on the phone <laughs> and get some help. Try that sometimes. Those are all ways that you can develop patience. But remember this, that you don't have to make the will of God come to pass. You've got to be open. you got to hear the voice of God. You've got to take steps of obedience that God has told you to take. But you don't have to make it come to pass. Right. Actually, most of the time, you cannot make the will of God come to pass. Right. Amen. God will have to open doors. There will have to be divine connections. Yeah. You know, there will have to be finances. There will have to be things that you need for the will of God to come to pass. And so, uh, as you pray, God opens doors according to his will. And so sometimes God opens doors and sometimes God shut, shuts door. Yeah. And if God shuts the door, then let him shut it. Amen? Amen. And you should, you should be glad that it's shut if God shuts the door. And so if God doesn't answer or do what I think he should, then I think, it, hey, that maybe that's not God's will. Or maybe it's, it's at a different time. Amen. Yeah. But God is working behind the scenes even when you cannot see it. That's right. See, God plans ahead. His name is Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. And the word Jireh in Hebrew means to see ahead. Woo. If God can do anything, he can see ahead. What I wouldn't give to be able to see ahead. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and know, uh, know what steps to take. Because hindsight is wonderful. You know, <laughs> you can look at hindsight and say, yeah, I should have done this. I should have done that. But God can see ahead. He's the one controlling the future. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. When you're guided by the Holy Spirit, then it just means you're a child of God. Because God gives direction to His children 
just like a natural parent will give direction to their children. Yeah. One of my children asked me for direction on what they should do. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to give them the guidance that they need. And the same thing is true of God. If you ask God for direction, He's going to speak to you and He's going to give you guidance. Amen? Yeah. But you need to be able to hear His voice and discern His voice and be able to act accordingly. Okay. And uh, that means that we should be able to pray and receive answers. Amen? Yeah. And so it's just natural for God to give us answers. It's just natural for God to lead us and guide us. And so He leads us in the right places at the right time. Yeah. And when we look back in hindsight, we can see that it was God leading us in situations. Amen? Yeah. God leading us in life. Um, and so many times as Christians, we're looking for something spectacular. You know, we're looking for something really big. And, you know, it, and so or sometimes many Christians are looking for a prophetic word. But a prophetic word is just supposed to be confirmation of something God's already spoken to you before. I think it's something God's been dealing, dealing with you about. And the prophetic word is just a confirmation. But we're looking for something spectacular, but God most often speaks in the still small voice. Amen? Yes. And he, speak, he speaks in a still small voice in our spirit and, and speaks to us in that voice. And sometimes we miss it because we're looking for something big. Yeah. We're looking for, you know, somebody to call us or show up at our house or, yeah. or the minister to call us out and give us a word or something like that. Yeah. But God has been speaking all the time. We just have not heard and discerned his voice and what he is saying to us. Really and so Jude 20 says to build yourself up in your faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. The best way I know to hear God's voice is to spend time praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about just five minutes or ten minutes. As I pray in the Holy Spirit, as my mind gets quiet, I'm able to hear God's voice and have guidance. But I have to, you know, I have to put that in my schedule. I've got to set aside, you know, the computer and TV and everything else. And I have to be desperate enough to hear God's voice that I'm going to spend time praying in the Holy Spirit until I hear God's voice. But if I want to press in, come on, if there's an urgent need, that's what I spend my time doing. Yes. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit has the answer. Yes. God has the answer. And it's just miraculous the way that it works. You spend time praying in the Holy Spirit. And then you get the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And things work out. Amen. Because you have a divine helper. The Holy Spirit. Who's not, a count, not just a counselor. But he is a divine helper. And so it takes time to hear God's, uh, God's voice. And to have God's guidance. Come on, you can't say God speak to me in the next five minutes, you know. You have to say, man, this is important enough that I'm going to set aside my time every day till I hear the voice of God. If you have crucial decisions coming up, you need to spend more time praying in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. More time in prayer so that you can hear the voice of God. Praise God. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth with our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession uh, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so he says, likewise the Spirit helps me. When he says likewise, he's, com he's comparing that to things he's already said before in that chapter. In that chapter, he's talking about the Holy Spirit's help, that he quickens our physical bodies, that he helps renew our minds. He calls our minds to be spiritual. And so he's talking about all those things, but he said, just like all those things happen, he said, likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. And the word infirmities means pressures or trials or problems and things that we go through. Your infirmities are your weaknesses or the, the tough things that you go through. But said the Holy Spirit will help you and the trials and pressures of life. The Holy Spirit will help you in the problems that you make okay, or that you have. And so we don't know how to pray as we are. You know, in any situation, I can pray according to the Word, according to the will of God. But many times there's details and things that I'm unaware of in any situation. Whether it's a relationship, whether it's your job, whether it's the economy, whether it's the president or the election, 
There's many things that we don't know, and many factors that we don't know, but God knows ahead of time what's going to happen in the next four years. But as I pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes hold together with me, and so the will of God will be done. Amen. And as I pray in the Holy Spirit, God can reveal His will to me. And what seemed cloudy now looks clear. Amen. When you used to be confused, now you have clear direction. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit uh, takes the words of, of Jesus and reveals those things to you. Amen. Yeah. He hears what God is saying. He gets God's knowledge and he reveals that to you in a way that you can understand. He gives you clear direction. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so many times, you know, if I'm working on a business problem or some situation and I don't have clear direction, clear direction. I pray in the Holy Spirit. Ask God for wisdom. The Bible says if any man uh, lacks wisdom, let him ask your God. So yeah. God will give you wisdom in every situation. Hallelujah. And so, you know, you can try to figure it out with your mind, but your mind is limited. Yeah. Come on, even if you're, you know, a genius, your mind is still limited compared to the mind of God. Amen. But God knows everything, and He will reveal His will. He will reveal that to you. And so you can pray the wrong way. A lot of Christians pray and pray and pray, but they pray the, walk the wrong way. And so it's not effective or they don't get answers. And you can pray the wrong prayers and not receive answers or, or not see things get any better. I heard a story about a man who went bear hunting. And so the, he shot at the bear and missed. The bear started chasing him. And so he's running. And so he starts praying. He said, oh God, let this be a Christian bear. Finally, the bear cornered him against the cliff. And the bear got down on his knees and says, thank you, Lord, for this food. And so you can pray the wrong prayer. Amen. Pray the wrong prayer and get the wrong answer. You can pray a prayer that's insignificant that won't change the situation. But God knows exactly every situation. You have a divine helper who knows everything. And so he's able to help you in prayer. Come on, he's able to overcome your weakness. And I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you're a committed Christian or you're not a committed Christian. Or you've been doing the things that you need to do. You haven't been doing the things you need to do. But one thing is, is sure is that the Holy Spirit is your divine helper. And I, you know, no matter what situation you're in, if you'll begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, it will make a difference in your life. Amen. It'll make a difference in your life. And you may be weak spiritually and you feel like, you know, I'm that close to backsliding. But you pray in the Holy Spirit, you're going to get encouraged. You're going to get built up. You're going to get strengthened. You're going to have light. Amen. You're going to have clear answers when you pray in the Holy Spirit. And you will be able to clearly hear the voice of God. Amen. Clearly hear the voice of God. And so it's through the Word and through the Holy Spirit that God gives us direction, that He cleans our life, that He helps us do the things that we need to do. It's so wonderful just to read, you know, the other day I read through Colossians, and I try to read the Word every day, but I just read through it, and man, it just built me up, tells you how to live the Christian life, how to have a relationship with God. And so if you're not reading the Word daily, you're missing out on God's instruction to, to help you to overcome but as you pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal that word to you and reveal the will of God to you. Romans 8, 28 says that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. This says that God is working in all things. What it doesn't say, and the way some people teach it, is that God causes all things. Come on. God doesn't cause tragedy and terrible things to happen. And, you know, uh, but he can work in all things and work good out of every situation. That's right. God can take a tragedy and even work good out of a tragedy. And some Christians say, well, God sent the coronavirus. I don't believe it. There's not any viruses in heaven. He didn't, God didn't have any viruses to oh, sin. That's good. Uh, but some people think that. But God, I don't believe God sent the coronavirus, but I believe God can work good out of the coronavirus. Right. Amen? Put the fear of God in some people and, and some people get right with God and realize the times that we are in. But God can work good out of every situation. Yeah. And so when the coronavirus came, you know, everybody's afraid and all these things are happening, but uh, God 
begin to work, amen, a lot of people's lives. Yes. And so more people are, man, they're watching uh, church on television. More people are getting to the Word of God. Yeah. And so God has blessed our church, brought us through everything, and then we haven't missed a lick. And so God's working in that situation. But I think when they shut down the barbershops and the beauty salons, things were going to get up. And, uh, I didn't get a haircut for like two months, I think. And I don't have any hairs to cut anymore. But, uh, but even, you know, I do get shaggy around my ears, my sideburns, so I had to get that cut. But the bad thing about telling coronavirus jokes is that it takes people 14 days to get it. And, uh, but God's even working through the coronavirus. He's working in every situation. And any problem that you have, God can use that as an opportunity to show himself strong. And sometimes when we get in problems and crisis, crisis and we realize how badly we need God. And when everything else is taken away from you, you know that, man, I need God. I desperately need him. Because he's the only one who's going to bring me through. He's the only one who supplies my needs. And so God can take that bad situation and cause it to strengthen you. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And so there's a story in the Old Testament about one time uh, a heathen king hired a prophet named Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And so Balaam was a prophet for hire. He is a spiritual, he's a spiritual man. I don't know what spirit, but he's supposed to have some supernatural power. And so, so he paid him to try to curse the children of Israel. Well, he almost got killed on the way to go to the mountain to do it. And that should have been a warning to him. But he got up there and every time he tried to speak a curse over the children of Israel, a blessing came out of his mouth instead. And finally, he just gave up. He said, I can't curse them because their God has blessed them. He said, God has blessed them and I cannot reverse it. And when God blesses you, when you're a child of God, nobody can reverse that. No situation can reverse that. No economic problem can reverse that. No politician can reverse that. Amen. When you're a child of God, you are blessed. And when you're walking and keeping the covenant, there is protection over you. And if somebody tries to curse you, the curse will come right back on them. Amen. Because God is your God. He is the one who causes you to overcome. Amen. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And so you have to have that mentality to not live in fear. But know that God is on my side. And if God is for you, who can be against you? The highest one in the universe has endorsed you and takes care of you. Amen. The greatest one, the richest one, the most powerful one is taking care of you. Amen. And so... In every situation, God can turn it for your good. Yes. Amen. And not, yes. not only can he, he will turn it for your good. I've had, seen so many times in life when things look bad and, and, you know, maybe I was feeling like giving up. But, man, I, I turned to God and I prayed, prayed to the Holy Spirit, and God turned that thing for my good. Yes. And what should have been a liability became a plus. Amen. Amen. What should have been the negative became a positive. Yes. Because we have an almighty God who Good takes care you. of us and turns things around. Amen. And so I have a word for some folks that are here today. Come on, that things have come against you. Weapons have come against you. Yes. But God's going to turn it for your good. Amen. Amen. God's going to turn it for your good. Some of you come here, you, maybe you're concerned today. You're worried today. Maybe you're worried about your finances, your family, or some other situation. But God's going to turn it for your good. Amen. Yes. If that's you today, I want you to stand up. You say, things have come against me. Weapons have come against me. Bad things have come against me. To cause fear and to cause doubt and to cause worry. But right now, I'm just going to release the blessing of God upon you. Right. And God's turning that thing for your good. Amen? God's changing that thing for your good. And the negative thing, God's going to work good out of it for His glory. So let's just pray right now. Father, we thank You. You're the Almighty God. You're the All-Powerful One. Father, we thank You that You turn curses around. And right now, we release a blessing 
Oh, your people say no weapon formed against sin will prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment will be condemned. And Father, we just thank you right now that you're turning these things around. Amen. Turn it around finances. Turn it around families. Turn it around personalities. Father, we thank you right now that you're doing a turning. Praise God, and you're working it for, for their good today. And they'll be able to look back and say, man, God was there in the midst of the problem. God was there in the midst of the situation. God turned that thing for my good. And you'll look back, and it will seem like a small thing that you've been through. Because Almighty God is on your side. And if he's for you, who can be against you? Amen. And so, Father, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you that you're working on behalf of your children. You're turning things around. Nothing is impossible with you. And, Father, we just release a blessing over them today that they'll have more in the future than they have now or they've had in the past and that you have bigger and better things for them. And, Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And so expect the turn for the good, amen? Expect the turn for the better. Because God has better things for you. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. We'll see y'all on Wednesday night.